And now, uh, you are the director of the Center of Patristic um, uh, Learning in, uh, in Ghent. Uh, could you tell us a little bit how it works, what the idea was behind and how it all started? Yes. First, I'm, I'm not really the director. We direct it with a team of people. So, uh, the main uh, vision behind our initiative is uh, uh, a big belief that the Church Fathers and the, the undivided Church of the, of the first centuries, the first ten centuries, has a, a kind of completeness and richness which is important to make to make known to to others especially to catholics because they are they have been uh, a very long time uh, cut off from that riches because uh, the catholic church in fact the western church in fact uh, got her own uh, identity mostly from the time of the 11th, 12th century and the time behind she forgot a little bit. Uh, especially um, uh, in, in the period before the, the big uh, Vatican Council of uh, 1965 which meant a kind of uh, new interview which uh, tried to 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 live and to in insert in in church life uh, a new interest in in the sources in the way of living of the old church in the way of uh, celebrating liturgy of the old church in the in in the way of uh, of theologizing of the old church and uh, and the spirituality which was very let's say, integrated, huh? the big tragedy of the Catholic Church after the 11th, 12th century is that the, the different domains of Catholic life became a bit separated. Theology became an, a world on its own. Spirituality and mystics became a world on its own. Liturgy became a world on its own. And the connections between all those domains um, were, were at, a, at, a, at, a, at a great measure lost, they were lost, they did not, uh, and so what we try with the Lehrers of the Kerk Fathers, the, the, the learning house of the Church Fathers, is to, to rediscover that unity, that unity, by lessons, by reading the, the texts, uh, not only of the Latin Fathers, but also of the Greek Fathers, of the, of the, of the Syrian Fathers, not only theologians, but also monastics, uh, to 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 uh, make known to our people that all this whole world is a kind of um, has a kind of unity from which Christ is the center, and he is approached by different uh, ways of speaking about him, different ways of telling him, of 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 uh, of uh, proclaiming pro proclaiming him. You see. The monastic language is different as the theological language, as the liturgical language, but they all circle around that main center, which is Christ, and that we want to to apprehend to uh, to our people. But um, it is the other places. It is mostly uh, the academic uh, circles, like uh, like departments of theology. Uh, where they have professors who uh, read the text together with their students on very high level. And very often there is a critique that those people sort of busy very much abstract, they produce very interesting texts, but they have very little to do with life. Yes. Um, uh, are you a sort of al alternative to that? You, are you trying to leave it or what is your vision? We, we try to respect the the the, the both parts. Eh? We are not a kind of, we, we, we um, our way of doing is not a kind of vulgarization in a very simple way. So there's also an academic and quite uh, s uh, serious intellectual aspect on what we are doing. But it's important to uh, challenge the people to go, to, to let their minds 
uh, work, let's say. Eh? That, that's important. Um, but in the other way, we try to represent it, and uh, it's, it's especially because of the, the, the people who is teaching here, they are not really academics. They are people involved in church life, most of them, or in monastic life, which have a big uh, background on, on those matters, but present it to our, uh, to our members in a, in a very living, in a very lively way, uh, because it's, it's, it's part of their life. What they, what they teach is part of their life. And that's, that it's, um, uh, let's say, th that's coming over to, to, to the people which assist to our lessons. Eh? Just they feel that it's more than just an, an, ac an interesting academic talk. It's, it's, uh, and, and the main point is, I think, and it's the most important thing, that they always feel and always uh, have a kind of consciousness that that it's nothing uh, real, not pure, an interesting matter, but that it concerns their lives because it concerns, it, 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 the, 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 the heart of the thing is Christ. The heart of the thing is, is Christ, you see? And that they should always uh, feel, they should always be conscious of that. And some of our teachers have this kind of, or, or really witnessing of that, other less, but the main thing is, is also uh, not only an academic, academic instruction, but also a kind of witnessing of the, of the, rit the richness of, of, of Christianity, which uh, comes out in the different, uh, in the different big figures uh, that, we, uh, that we are teaching about. So if I understand it correctly, that um, uh, your uh, lessons in your center are connected also to some other activities, perhaps of spiritual kind, like uh, prayers of some services uh, or some pilgrimages, maybe uh, visiting some places, I don't know, monasteries. Could you tell us about, yes. about that? First thing that we, we find it very important that every uh, day that the lessons are going on in this place there is a moment of prayer. That's one thing. The lessons are there. They start with prayer. There is a moment of an office that we pray. And, and also an important thing that is a kind of ecclesiastic even, um, uh, hap happening so that they meet each other. They meet each other in prayer, in, in discussing, in, in talking with each other and in getting the, the, the things which are teach it, teach it, which are teach it. So whole, this whole thing is folding, is, is coming together in a kind of, uh, a kind of uh, événement uh, ecclesiastique. Eh? This, uh, yes. But, uh, we organize also different things. Every two years we organize a kind of uh, colloquium on a spiritual matter which, is, which has an ecumenic aspect. So uh, a spiritual matter which is linked to our both, of, both of our churches, but uh, very important is the, the input of the Orthodox Church in, in what, we, what we do. For instance, last time we had a, a colloquium on the Jesus prayer. So the main speaker, uh, fa, uh, Bishop Callisto Swear, uh, is, is an Orthodox. We also look to uh, a, a real testimony coming from the Orthodoxy, also in, in, in the, those colloquia, alongside with Catholic speakers and Catholic uh, t um, uh, yeah, speakers. Speakers? Speakers, yes. Uh, we do this every two years on a, on a spiritual matter uh, uh, different things. We did uh, about the Syrian fathers, we did about the, the Gaza fathers, with a very uh, uh, concrete, uh, real, real teaching about Christian life. Eh? And now we did on the Jesus prayer. So what we do, the, the, the years in between, we organize a kind of pilgrimage to, uh, 
to important places of of the of old Christianity, where where Christianity was 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 starting, was growing up with linked to important church figures, and linked also to beautiful artistic uh, uh, monuments of of the early church or the Byzantine church or the Romanesque church or something like that. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the forms of your cooperation with the uh, with the Orthodox Church and perhaps about some different ways of approaching patristics which you perhaps perceive between the Catholic and the Orthodox Church if they are? Yes, sure. Um, first, the, the, the very start of our, of our Lehrhaus is an initiative which, grew, which started here but immediately linked to Father Dominique Verbeke of the Orthodox Parish here in Ghent. He was from the very beginning, he was involved in the initiative. He, he was making, um, uh, we are assembling uh, together the programs and the, and the teachings and everything. He is also teaching here. Also other Orthodox uh, uh, teachers are here from uh, Jos van Rossum from Saint Sergio for instance and you yourself have been teaching here. So th that, that's important. The main thing is that, uh, not that we really are coming together very regularly, but that we feel a common ground, that we are, uh, a kind of consciousness grows, that we are building on a, on a common ground and that our sources are the same and that uh, an Orthodox can be touched by the, by the writings of a Latin father as we can be touched by the writings of a Greek father. You see, in that they, in fact, they are not so different as that, and they are really speaking about about the same matters, eh? and they are very close to each other, in fact, and they are uh, giving nuances, which is very interesting. Uh, that's very important, but there is a difference in approaching, and uh, the main thing is that the Orthodox have a liturgy, in which the whole patristic teaching is. Um, um, uh, re resonated, eh? re resounding uh, is, is, is uh, uh, yes, wordly often the teachings of the fathers are in the liturgy, so the people is uh, is really teached uh, by is really taught by, by the liturgy by the liturgy, uh, wherein the whole richness of the patristic teaching is is rep is represented. The Catholic liturgy also has in fact, in, in principle, has this, um, this rewording of patristic insights, but in a much more less explicit way. It's much more, let's say, hidden. So you really have to know the patristic teaching to recognize in the liturgy what is, what is patristic. So the, the, the Latin liturgy is very sober uses much less words, is much less catechetical, uh, is, uh, has, has another genius, and in the Orthodox liturgy that's very different. So the, the, the riches is very uh, exuberantly uh, uh, pronounced in the liturgy, and the, the catechesis is, is very abundant eh, in all aspects of dogmatics and spirituality or, 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 or spoken out in the liturgy. It's not so in the Latin liturgy. It's, it's much less hidden. It's, it's there, but it's hidden. It's hidden. The, the, the fathers, in fact, have been rediscovered in the Catholic Church since the, the 40s, 1940s, by the big theologians which prepared the, the, the Council of Vaticanum II. The, the big theologians as Daniel Lu, uh, Congar, Hansus von Balthasar, the big Catholic theologians, which are all of them were very uh, great patrologists. Uh, they, they wrote very important works about patrology. For instance, Hansus von Balthasar, which is one of the first studies on St. Maximus Confessor. So they really knew um, the, the patristic mind and their, their, um, their main issue was that, that we should come closer to that, to that, old, to that older, older church. Eh? But uh, it's only now, let's say, 
and in France it's more than here. Here it's just the, the beginning, but in France they are also a bit further, in Germany also, that they rediscover and slowly, slowly uh, patristic uh, teachings are coming down to the, to, 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 to the lay people and to the, to the church people. They are slowly, slowly coming down, you see, in the, in the teachings, in the catechesis, it's, it's uh, slowly, slowly, it's, um, it's, coming, it's coming to them. But it's a, it's a long, long way, anyway. Do you feel that there is a real need? Do you think that the Catholic people are thirsty for the fathers? Who is your student? Yes, w that's our experience. We, we have a lot of in, a lot of people is interested in what we, in what we present. So, but it's very it's very modest and it's very the very beginning. Let's say you you cannot. Uh, uh, it's not an enormous movement. It's it's very small and very uh, limited at the moment. But I, there is an interest, and I think it will grow. I hope it will grow. <laughs> but what kind of people do you attend your courses? Uh, could you All kind of people. We have some priests. We have some deacons. We have some monastics. We have some. The main of uh, main people is lay people, not of the youngest kind, but also yo some young people are following. Uh, the, the lessons, so they are all, and when they come, they they um, they stay, because our our cycle is five years long, so they don't abandon. In in most most of them don't, uh, almost nobody is abandoning during those those times, those periods. Your since it is a center, and a learning center, so there is a program. What is your curriculum like? What kind of courses are being taught? What is building up process? What books do you read? We, we uh, our, our cycle, uh, as I said, um, involves five years. The, the two first years is, a, is a, we follow a chronological line. So we begin with the Apostolic Fathers and we end with Saint John Damascene and at the end of the 10th century something with a kind of view forward in, in, the, in, the later, in the later periods. Then we have two years with the catech catechetical line, with the main themes of Christianity, which are approached from the readings of the Fathers. And then the last year is a liturgical, a liturgical year. Uh, you always see it um, uh, some sort of an institution, what do you have, or is it a kind of catechetical um, uh, initiative? Uh, what I mean is just do you produce some sort of certificate? Do you give some sort of future for the students? What their expectations are to do afterwards? No, not at all. So it's just the kind of spiritual enrichment that we hope to give to them. And uh, we are linked to the, to the Catholic uh, vicariate of, the, of formation of the and uh, we are a kind of element in their in their program, but we don't give certain. We, gi we give just a kind of, of paper which uh, they will follow after fifty the five years. But that's not the main thing. We we really want to to give a spiritual and theological enrichment to the people which is coming here, and some of them will do some things with that afterwards. Other other it just for their personal for their personal life and enrichment. Yes. Uh, and perhaps it would be really nice if some, something of the kind would appear and was spread in, around in the Orthodox countries. Uh, could you perhaps give some tips what should be done in order to achieve some, what you have achieved here? <laughs> yes, the, 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 I think the, the main thing is that, that, that it has to grow slowly. It, it has to come from it has to grow or organically. This is what, what happened here. It, it grew up like this. It's a long way of starting and, and searching, and then suddenly it was there. We, not, we did not really organize it uh, from, from the beginning with, from out of a, of a kind of idea. It, it was growing up slowly, slowly. And uh, the main thing is that, it's, uh, that it remains simple, that it remains uh, humble, and it, it's uh, really close to Christian life itself, eh? to, to, to the real center of Christian life itself, and, it, and that it's enriching people's, people's uh, 
people's way of living together and li of, of living of living Christ Himself in, in, in their in their daily life, let's say.